We're over the hump, so I'm skipping the intro and we're diving straight into part 11, door and window schedules. Now this one's a little bit nerdy and we're gonna try keep it relatively simple so that everybody can work their way through this and make sure they can replicate for themselves. First of all, let's jump back to our ground floor plan and actually define what we're talking about. What we, what we need to do is identify each one of our doors and our windows in our project on both levels. We need to identify them with some sort of marker. So let's select the front door. It's typically where we start with our door and window schedule and we generally work in a clockwise pattern. So if we start at our front door, we can work our way around the building and then come back. Command T opens up our settings and then down the bottom you're going to see classifications and properties. The first thing you need to check is that your door is actually set to door. If it's not set to door, it's just not going to show up on any of your door and window schedule. Next, you want to give it an ID tag. You want to call it what you specifically want to call it. For me, I like to have my door as D01. If it's a sliding door, S01. If it's a pivot door, P01 so forth. Windows, kind of similar concept, W01 moving forward. In this case, it is a non-load bearing element. It is positioned on the exterior, not the interior. It doesn't make too much of a difference in our door and window schedule, but it's nice to have there. We can either go through and update all of our individual elements here in our classifications and properties to backload into our schedule, or we can create a very unique special schedule. So first of all, let's hit that okay button. Let's come all the way around, find the second door, open that up, repeat our process, D02, non-load bearing, and exterior, pressing OK. Last but not least, we have our door 03, which we also want to change in name. For the purpose of this, we also want to introduce all of our windows, so let's start at the front door, go to the classifications, make sure that it's on the window, change that to window 01 position, Exterior, structural, non-load bearing, okay. We can go around, repeat that for all of these windows on the ground floor. So I'll quickly go and do that now. And now that we've gone around, tagged all of our windows with the correct label that we are happy with, we can go and add a door or a window tag. So if you come across to your labels on the left-hand panel, you're gonna find your label tool. You can open up the label settings and go through a series of available properties for you. Personally, I love the 4D one, it just makes sense, but again, not available to everybody. The easiest ones to use is the property label or the opening label if you want a little bit more detail. Otherwise, you can scroll through, test these out and see what you like. So as an example, property label, let's make that all black so it's relatively easy to understand. If you want a pointer or not, it's completely up to you guys. Personally, I don't see too much value in the pointer, but if you turn the pointer off, you'll see a leader line pops back into place. So you're gonna to have to come into your symbol label custom settings, come across, find leader line, untick that, press okay. And then you will have your first door and window schedule tag. So simply by duplicating that, I can select each individual window, click on the window to create the tag and then drag it where I'd like it to be positioned in this documentation package. And then you go around, add them to all the doors and windows and make sure you're happy. With interior doors, you can do very much the same thing. However, I would change it to ID01 so you know that an interior door is an interior door, not specifically a exterior door. If you want to go ahead, repeat those same steps on the upper floor, you're most welcome to. It is going to be identical from what you've just done on the lower floor. Take note that these labels can be done for anything. You can use them for wall schedules, you can use them for floor schedules, you can use them for basically anything that what we want to do now is come all the way across to our right hand panel i'll extend it out just so you can see a little bit more we then want to come over to our main project map scroll down till we find schedules open up our elements tab which is going to hold our door list if you double click on the door list you're going to have a very simple door and window schedule now you've got a door list and you've also got a door schedule which basically creates all of these doors automatically for you, highlights them, provides them an elevation, gives you the color from the outside, gives you the color from the inside, and much, much more. When we look at this door and window schedule, it's relatively complicated. For instance, from room and to room often isn't required. If you have a door label, you know exactly where it is and you can map it back to that information. 
So how do we adjust this? How do we edit it? Well, the first thing you wanna do is come across to scheme settings in the top right hand corner. And in scheme settings, you can click through any of these, the door list, the window list, the door schedule, or anything you need. For us, we're talking about door schedule right now. So we don't want from zone, we can remove it. We don't want to zone, we can remove it quite happily. The quantity I'm happy with, I know I've only tagged one as door zero one. The door leaf is very important. The width, the height, the seal height and the head height, all absolutely critical. The plan preview isn't actually that critical. So I tend to actually remove the plan preview personally and only leave some form of elevation. The frame width, the frame thickness are relatively important. If you do need to change them, you have to change them in the actual door settings. Moving across to our frame outside, inside, leaf color and glass. They are also relatively important, especially as you document more and more into construction. You can make sure every door is painted exactly as you need it to be without going over the top and trying to create some sort of ridiculous schedule. I'm going to press OK for this just in a second to showcase the fact that everything changes and automatically adjusts across. If I continue to scroll across to the right hand side, open up my scheme settings again, I can then see some more details. So leaf thickness, handle height, handle offset from edge. Again, some of these things are relatively important, but in reality, not that critical. If I was doing this myself, I would adjust. If I was doing this myself, I would adjust the leaf thickness, the handle height and the handle position, as well as the handles up in line with the frame thickness because we're jumping from thicknesses and specifications to colors so we want to group elements as best as we can hold open door device is a very useful feature as is the fire exit as is the hardware set and lock set auto close and opening notes so i'll leave all them for the time being if you double click on number of hinges it is a default text box so you can simply just type in three hinges, press OK, and it will automatically populate with three hinges. The glass can be changed directly from this space, noting that it will automatically change the material as well. You can also tick or untick these fire exit boxes and your hardware and lock and auto close all are the same. Notes would be predominantly for a special item if you needed anything outside of the ordinary or that was missing. If you have something that is typically shown on all of your doors and windows that is critical, something potentially like a weather seal, let's jump back into our scheme settings and we can add some fields. So for instance, a door seal is non-existent and not available for us. So what will we do in that instance? Well, let's press okay. Let's jump to our help menu and let's type in manager. If we come across to classification manager, open up our classification, go to elements, go to openings, find door and select on our door. You'll see there is a number of different elements available to us. What we can then do is hit our property manager tool, find our openings, press plus, and in this property name, I'm simply gonna call it door seal. I press okay. That door seal is going to be created at the bottom of our list. Now, from there, we can take a little bit step further. We can change it from a string, a number, or all sorts of different things. The quickest and easiest way is most likely an option list. And then that option list is just a simple drop down menu. What do we want? Do we want a weather, weather seal? Do we potentially want an acoustic seal? Do we need a fire seal? Or potentially, we just want not applicable. Press OK, press OK, press OK. Update our scheme setting once more, and we can actually search seal this time openings door seals double click on it it is added right directly to the bottom i'm just going to adjust that above our notes press ok door seal we can see it is now available to us but what i've done is missed a critical step so what we need to do help come back to property manager and instead of going to our value definition up the top where we typed in weather seal we want to change our availability for classifications Simply change it to custom, find our door, tick the door box and press OK. It will add that to the schedule on the right hand side. Finally, we press OK and it's going to allow us to actually define our weather seals, our acoustic seals or even our fire seal. So if there was fire seal, it is a fire door. We definitely don't want it to hold open in a fire instance. Hardware, we can list it, locks, we can list it and notes so forth. If you wanted to go ahead and change the hardware 
to some sort of drop down menu to something that you are continuously using throughout the day throughout the week you can do that as well just like we created this door schedule you can do the exact same thing with the window schedule go through adjust it exactly how you like it make sure it has all the parameters you need or don't need and hopefully by the end of this video you know a lot more about ArcCAD we're continuing through this ArcCAD course that's all for this episode like always I'll see you next Monday